Friday. Yeah, my apologies for yesterday. I do regular business on Thursday with my crew. We do our banking. We do we exchange a lot of stuff back and forth. And this is the second time I've had to reschedule my Thursday live for Friday. So I think from now on, it's going to be Fridays. We'll change the schedule up on the header of the YouTube channel because I don't want to uh, be inconsistent. You guys need to know if I say, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Now, I am a few minutes early. I always like to come. Hi there. Who said hi, gorgeous? Hi, Opal. How are you guys doing? I know if I talk just a, a little bit longer, everybody will start coming in the room. I'd rather get here a couple minutes early and make sure you all see I'm here. Again, I apologize for yesterday. I think... Uh, Thursday's live needs to become a permanent residence on Friday. Hi, John. Got your, or Janelle. Hi, Janelle. Boy, my eyes are really bad right now, guys. I'm squinting. I'm not seeing really well. So, a uh, couple things. Uh, I've got a bunch of jars all lined up here, but I do want to talk about, hey, guys. I want to talk about some of the results of what we did on our resin thing. Now, <laughs> some of it didn't turn out like I had expected, but that's okay. I mean, we're kind of learning together, right? But, uh, so, I was dropping all those in. Now, don't mind the gold. I tried to catch this about three o'clock in the morning and it was let's see we did the live we ended at noon so noon to midnight to three so it was 13 hours not the full 24 when i pulled it out and you can see these little gold lines i was still able to rub the golden maple and it grabbed it had i gotten it probably a couple hours earlier the gold in the side would have stayed but this is the this is the side I was dropping all the drops on, and quite frankly, hey John, uh, looking at these patterns up close, this would have been way more interesting had I had a dark color down. I was dropping these drops into, and then all those little fractures and veins in between would have had some kind of contrast between them. But it did turn out real interesting. I do love that purple sapphire. But I tried to rub a little bit of the golden maple on. A lot of you may not realize that resin and hot melt glue have a tack period, meaning they remain tacky. And if you rub mica on it, it will stick. So that's why these little veins, this is like some kind of kintsuki mold. <clears throat> After we got off air... I poured off the Andromeda in this mold that had this cute little dandelion thingy to it. Now the Andromeda turned out really pretty. Hey there, Simona. But you can see that the gold did still go in and grab these little areas here. I did several videos trying to do this technique and I went back to try to re-watch what I did <clears throat> because I, I love what this texture does, but I really think it needs more of a backdrop to it, some kind of contrast to it. Nobody's saying anything, so I'm sure you guys all agree with me. <laughs> then there was these other coaster molds, and remember I had poured the a little bit of the burnt orange and golden maple in the cup, there wasn't really enough to fill this all the way up, but I managed to spread a real thin layer. And look at this. After at three in the morning when I found these, hi everybody, hi Mandy. I, uh, I started pulling these apart. And this reminds me, there's a mineral that looks like this. It's driving me nuts to try to, I've been trying to remember what the name of that mineral is that has that sparkly, it's not a sandstone, 
but um, I broke these up on purpose because I think in, hi Sonia, I think in a uh, an actual piece, I could paint an area that's black or deep blue. I could mount these on there and create a textural component and resin over the top of them. I don't know, I fell in love with what this stuff looks like, butterscotch chips. Yeah, but there's an actual mineral that looks like this. It is just crazy, sparkly, gorgeous. The light is just really picking this up. And then, hey there, Princess Jasmina's mama's baby. Then this was that weird color. I started with the pink mink. You can see some of the pink in there. And then I added that yellow because I tried to make it a coral. I added a little magenta. Some of the gold stuck. But then this made me think, I've seen a lot of people take a mold and then put in a little bit of clear, put down saran wrap and let it dry overnight. And then they brush on mica on the patterns or color on the patterns and resin over the top of it. That made me think of this. We're still trying to figure, it made me think of these things. I have a few of these molds we can test like this. And look at this, there's two sides of this thing. I could probably, it would be mad it wouldn't come out shiny, right? But I don't know, I keep thinking of the layering process. And then we're still trying to figure out, I got messaged again today. I made these metallics, but we don't, I don't think we barely even thought about what they could do. I think they would hold up being painted on resin. Uh, I want to try them on a gel medium thing. I did this piece in the Winterfest event last January. I, it's across the room, so I can't get it for you, but I painted this board three quarters with a deep turquoise, one quarter with a French silk. You guys might remember it. And then I had this idea of doing this texture of gel medium straddling between two of the colors, right? And uh, I ended up resin the piece. What's interesting is a couple weeks later, I realized that gel medium, and maybe I'm just imagining it, underneath that resin kept getting more and more and more transparent. What if we can do, whether it's with resin or we do it with gel medium, create some kind of the texture that we can, I know I, my brain's been going nuts all morning, brush some interference on the back, brush some interference on the top, inlay it and then resin it, maybe use the metallics, I don't know. My brain's been going nuts all morning. Part of it has to do with Sonia. Sonia, you're the one that got my mind reeling. She asked me yesterday about glass and we're gonna do a swipe today. We're gonna do an interference swipe and then while it's setting up, Sonia, I'm gonna show you what I was talking about when I said I create a tooth on this. Sonia likes to work on glass vases and she was trying to figure out how to get the paint to adhere. And now this, is, this piece has some test on the front and test on the back. But what I had done is I had taken some Vivid enamel and gel medium would work just as well and sponged it all over front and back. Of course, then I tried to do dotting art. This is my attempt at doing dotting art. But before I did the dot art, I was then able to take just some primary elements and a little bit of the uh, art fluid and just kind of sponge the color on to get this color. But I'm wondering if the metallics would hold up on this also. Once there's a tooth on this glass, once there's, yeah, once there's a tooth on glass, you can do almost anything. Sonia, like I said, you got my brain reeling. I'm thinking about painting glass ornaments black, doing some kind of gel texture on the top with some interference. I don't know. My brain's just primary elements and dusting the uh, primary elements. No, because there's too much color in it, but definitely the interferences. 
They remember primary elements have ground color in them. So maybe the ones I'm about to show you today might work. These dragonfly wing colors are an interference with just enough color. As a matter of fact, I miss, uh, I actually misbranded them at first. There you go, Sonia, though. There's how I got that tooth on that glass bottle. So what we done with the, uh, the dragonfly wings is I had this idea Depends on the color. Just depends on the color, guys. And some of the interference, what's hanging onto your mold is the interference that's in that primary element, not the color base. The color won't stick. Now you can take a little bit of water and wet it down and try to paint the inside of it, okay? Thank you so much for saying that about the sun-kissed pink. It's actually something I kind of want to dribble on the day, but I don't know if I want to wreck my piece. So today we're gonna to play with the, what I branded as blingets to begin with. Yes, it's the Dragonfly Wing set. We're gonna have a couple colors from that. And basically the concept of these was interference with just enough color in them, like almost putting a drop of color on a sugar cube, right? You can tell by my glove how much interference and sparkles in there. And there's just a dash of color. Let's see what, is this the dragonfly wings? This is, no, this is sweet pea, which kind of has a little bit of peachy tint. Okay, so we're gonna mix these real fast. Everybody who's taken notes, go ahead. I'm gonna play it straight. We're gonna do some straight interferences here, and then I'm gonna make some up the dragonfly wings, okay? And same recipe as I did last time, because I'm doing a swipe on this board back here. I'm hoping it makes enough paint. I got a little spoon this time just to measure out my varnish. So each one of my cups, see how far back I can get this camera here for you guys. Each one of my cups, you know what, we have a, guys, we have a, 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 inter, a place where you can review what you think of them and post the videos as you're playing with them. Yesterday, somebody, they were worried that the survey up there was too much about the secret sample. I changed the, uh, the questions. So now there's an actual review. If you click on reviews on the website, go in and, uh, Oh no, I've got all kinds of ideas about painting, painting on the glass. I just wanted to let you know about creating two, sweetheart. That's not at all how I would paint it, but I wanted you to know what I meant by tooth. So I'm gonna put a quarter teaspoon in varnish at each of these five cups. I think I have five cups in front of me. Is we wanna get working on the swipe part. And we're gonna get, let's do an eighth of a teaspoon. And when I say play it straight, I'm gonna play it straight. I'm not gonna pull a Mandy with interference gold and then red sparkle. Cause what I'm gonna do is literally lay across the interferences in their own families across the board and swipe them. Yeah, I was just to give you two. So that pink that you pour over the top will hold honey. I just want you to have good luck of it grabbing because glass by its very nature isn't going to grab that paint unless there's something on there to help it like a tooth, right? So this is interference red and diamond red. You're going to see I've mixed them all up. This is interference violet and sparkle violet, the mid-size flake. I was talking to Sherry L about this on the phone and she says, please, please, please do an interference swipe. You see, but this is something I would assume you guys had already done. And no, we know what happens when we assume stuff. This is the green, interference green. So I'm alternating. Red with diamonds, violet with sparkle. Green with diamonds, violet, the blue with the sparkle and gold with the diamonds. Wait a minute other way around. Blue with diamonds, gold with it. You can see them right there. The little jars are the golds. 
Here's that interference green. And this is the diamond green. Incidentally, uh, I've been working on a page for the website. It's not done yet. It'll be color play deals. Anything that's discounted, going to be eliminated from the site. And I've been asked, and you guys, I, I appreciate your feedback. I've been asked, someone said, couldn't I create a set every single day that I do a live? And I said, that would be a little bit hard to do. But I could do a set of the week of everything I played with. And because not everybody works with resin, I'm thinking you know, one set might have a single prism pour, a single vivid intense, a couple primary elements, you know, whatever I use that week. And then do like a little resin art group of three or four colors that are on a special deal. Now I'm gonna discount them as the sets, which means they will not take a coupon code. Everybody hear me. If I do a $49.99 set, right, that coupon code, they, they will have already been discounted so deeply, the coupon code will not take on the color play deal set because I will have already knocked it all the way down. You know, I want something that's $49.99, that if somebody wants to come in once a week or every other week and wants to buy something, they can't. Now, Look at how pretty these look. Oh, I'm so excited about how they all look. So we've got sparkle gold and eye gold. Sorry, I'm putting them all back in their box where they belong. I, I weigh on the side of always being neat and tidy. So if on the fly I have to grab something, I have my little box that I'll go back into. I can find them for you. Because if I'm on a live, last thing I wanna do is waste your precious time. So let's get all these off the table and back in their places with bright, shining faces. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm, if you could see what I'm doing, I'm getting my box all over. I'm really fun. I'm OCD about this, getting everything organized in my box because at a moment's notice, if I have to be able to add, grab some interference green for you, I know exactly where it's at. So here we go. Okay, they're all back. Now, when we did the recipe last time and it worked perfectly, we did two paddles worth of, this is a Vivid Enamel, one part gel medium, five parts, four and a half to five parts vivid enamel. And uh, I'm just going to try to do this as clean as possible. It's really cold here. I don't know about you guys. And, and I'm in California, but 48 degrees here, everything's kind of cold and really thick. Hi there. How are you? Thank you for joining us, Royal. So we're just getting our two. See, you know, I remember when we used, when we do videos, we never showed the color mixing in the beginning because people got bored. And yet, if you're wondering how a certain product works, you know, how boring is it actually? I don't know. It's 65, and here I, well, I'm in Central California, so it can actually snow here, which you may, guys may not be aware of, but 42 degrees is pretty darn cold in the morning. So here is our red, interference red with sparkle red. It feels a little thick. I think it's the weather. This is the diamond, the violet diamond with interference. What's your weather like in Alabama, honey? Hot, cold? 30? <laughs> oh my God, you guys. This is the violet. This is the green. It's got some diamond in it. I think the blue has diamond and the gold is the one with the sparkle. 
What is it? Did you say minus four in Oregon? Wow, you guys. No, I'm not reading that right. Am I reading this right? I'm stirring while I'm watching everybody talk about their weather, where they're at. It's nuts. Thirty-two tonight. Wow. Wow, look at that. I really, I can't, I don't know why I cannot get tired of seeing those in the camera. I just get real excited. So those got mixed up pretty quick. I'm going to grab the Freesia. Those of you guys that have the set, you know what I'm talking about. Here's Robin's egg. And then... Firefly, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but let's put, you'll see suddenly the difference between these and these, and these just have a drop of color. It's 52. I'm jealous. It's not 52 here. And I don't know why, but these feel thick. I'm worried that they're too thick. I need to listen to my instincts. I'm gonna make this a slightly heaping quarter teaspoon because I think it could be the weather here that's causing this. Even my cell activator looks thick and you know cell activator after it's made for a while, made, made up, it's usually thinner, not thicker. I have a little bit more of my custom base here mixed up. See how thick that is? It's pretty thick. By the way, leftover gloves, you're gonna throw away. Best thing in the world to cover up a container with uh, material. I learned that from Tammy Anderson. I can't take credit for that. She was the brilliant one that I saw do that in her video. And I thought that's pretty smart. Good way to use the you know, your leftover gloves, right? Really, I couldn't do that. I could, I could not do that. Keep my resin in my kitchen? I don't know, honey. Okay, so here's a color called Robin's Egg. These are in the Dragonfly Wing set. It's under primary elements. You go to the website, go to dry paint systems because we changed those headers so it can specify a category. There's liquid paints and dry paints. Then go to the primary element sets and you'll find the dragonfly wings in the sets. The colors will be listed 84. Where are you, Simona? <laughs> the colors are listed individually under alphabetically if you look under the it says uh colors by names i don't think the dragonfly wing they may have made it into a color family but they're so delicate guys that uh, you're better off trying to find them either in the set or on the individual page okay let's add a little bit of uh You guys are having so much fun talking about your weather. Trying to keep up with everybody's weather report here. All right. I want to be on that end of the camera with you guys watching me and not have to sit in. I want to see what you guys are saying. I want to visit. I'm trying to be really careful and not knock these in these other cups. Uh, Robin's egg is going to be that really delicate color of the outside of an egg, right? You've seen a Robin's egg, but see it's got a flash of interference violet. So I think what I'm going to do 
is add a little pop. You want to be over here? Okay. You can do the camera one day. It's not probably none your products, but there are brands. But when it comes to quality, thank you so much for saying that. I really appreciate it. These are actually not, the, these are mica powders that I mixed here. Primary Elements is a dry paint system, and that's why they look different to everybody, right? It's, it, it really makes, it really makes a difference. This, uh, ooh, that color, there's that freesia. I see some red, and I do see some interference violet in there, but I think just to make this a little bit fun, if I could find some of my red. I don't know, this is a risk. Do I put one of the opal reds in one of my dragonfly wings? <laughs> I'm just gonna put a pinch. I have no idea if that's gonna ruin it because that opal color could completely change this. But, <clears throat> Actually, this would have been the best, better color to put that red in, but this looks like it would really do well with a violet added. They all look like they have a little violet to them. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are kicking the pants just watching everybody have fun. Hi, Luda. Seeing everybody on here. Okay, so let's see how much I blew it by putting the Aurora in there because that's going to really antique up this color. Ooh. God, that's really interesting. Wow. Which color was this? This is that freesia. Wow, that's... I mean, it did go kind of gray antique, but that's really interesting. Okay. I know the violet in the uh, robin's eggs is going to be glorious. There's no doubt I'm going to get this beautiful shimmer in there. <clears throat> and then the firefly... It's supposed to be in the kind of antique-y, pastel-y, gold-y color. A lot of people buy Firefly. It's, I guess it turns out to be really, really interesting in your pores. Okay. I'm going to use white cell activator. And I know that's I, it's another risk that I'm taking <laughs> doing it like this on the board, but uh, whose enthusiasm? <laughs> who's enthusiastic? Me? Yeah, I love color, girl. I love color so much, I can't stand it. Okay, I really wanna go this way with them. Be easier to draw them on that way. And then if I get these cups out of the way, I can swipe that way with a white. So I'm going to start at the top and we'll work our way down. And this is that red. Now, I know I'm going to get questioned why I didn't put any paint down. Normally, I work dry. Uh, the last couple times, I did put a little bit of a Cell activator, <clears throat> I just used white cell activator on the edges. So I'm gonna do that right now and just kind of lubricate. Because this is the, the angle of which I'm swiping, so I've gotta make sure that there's paint there when I swipe and I'm not gonna have an empty canvas, right? So. This was that spoon that I used to measure out the custom cell activators. Yeah, last video we made custom cell activators. It was a lot of fun. And I sent some uh, of the Purely Pigments to Sheldon. He is the master, if you've never gone to Sheldon Briscoe's site, 
He is the master at making cell activators out of just gel medium and paint. Uh, I mean, yeah, just gel medium and uh, some kind of tube painting. He's magically able to get stuff to work. He's even able to get his cell activators to work without Australian Floetrol. I, myself, am not quite as brave as Sheldon, but I sent him some purely pigments. I don't know if he'll have time to work with it before the quarterly event. I try to get some samples out to everybody now that we have plastic eyedroppers. I'm trying to get samples out to all the affiliates for the event. And if you're wondering, the event, January 27th, 28th, is the Winter Dreams event. Two days. This time we have 13 artists. There's a few people that had to step out because of family issues. And that's okay. You know, it is what it is. <clears throat> this is our family, man. And when people have stuff they got to do, they got stuff they got to do. So... All right, so I'm just going to go for it. Other than I just dropped that spoon in my lap. Ha! <laughs> what? what? What was the what was the nature of the call, Luna? What did I say? What did I do? Okay, just so you know, I'm moving this forward so I don't have to get up and I can reach it easier, guys. I promise as I pull back, you'll see this. What did I say that? Got your attention there, Luna. Maybe this will help spread it out a little bit better. Let's get my paddle here so you guys can see me do this. There are some people when I call and they go, who are you? Like they want to know who the person was. There are other people that when I call, they go, oh my God, because they recognize my voice, I guess. And they said, I didn't know it would be you calling me. Well, why not? I'm still in charge of making sure everybody gets taken care of. You know, when, when you're a small-time entrepreneur and we're hammocking everything, we may look mighty, <laughs> but we are still growing. We're still trying to grow, small but mighty. And to me... You guys are more important. If you need help, I'm going to do my best to get on the phone and help you. It's just a fact, Jack. Okay, let's get that off. This is, this is the tricky part. I'm so used to, when in the old days, when you do your swipes off camera. Okay, so that was red. This color is violet. I don't want to go next to red with violet. So we're going to go red to... I'm going to go red to blue, and then blue to green, and then green to violet, and then violet to gold. That's what we'll end up with. But here is our blue. I think I like that paddle I was using better. And because they were interferences, as a little tiny bit of my interference glue blue gets mixed up in that red, it's not going to hurt anything. You know, I was on the phone with Sherry Ellis telling her I did this one time on a big MDF board, 16-inch MDF board. The whole thing was covered with just the interferences, and I swiped it with white, and it was so beautiful, Cole, and so elegant, and yet I had to screw it up, of course, and add something on top. And had I left it alone, it would have made a great clock. Imagine a beautiful clock with just shimmering iridescences. And as you walk by, right, you see those iridescents glowing as you're walking by in the light. It'd make a really subtle clock. Uh, Luna, um, what's your channel, Luna? Isn't it Luna Sky, honey? She's our dot art, art expert, even though I know she's been branching out into other stuff. But she is really awesome when it comes to the dot art. You got to be super patient with that, girls and boys. Really patient. Okay, we're going. That's the red. We went to blue. Now we're going to go to green. Move up here so you guys can see me put the green on. Right now it looks like white. <laughs> Looks all white. Let 
only thing is I'm not really left-handed, but for your eye, it would be better if I could keep my uh, hand out of the camera for you guys. <clears throat> Luna, what day are you on? Are you on Saturday or Sunday this time? I feel like I'm not coming down far enough. That's three colors and half my board is not covered yet. So I'm gonna have to bring this down just a little bit. Cause we're gonna drizzle the colors on top of some of these sections, right? I'm not gonna wait for it just to go straight on the bottom. I still think I should be using syringes, John. I love the feel of syringes. So yes, John, you sent me a very long email yesterday. I apologize. My eyes are going bad. I did not read the whole thing. I know I still owe you a large interference violet. Yeah, Luna's a sweetheart and she does some beautiful work, you guys. We have a great team and everybody is so diverse. Mandy is so meticulous, fretting over her pieces all the time, making sure they're absolutely gorgeous and explaining every step of the way what she's doing. So many people don't do that. She also does some gorgeous resin work. And then Arissa, oh my God, I think I saw Arissa. Is Arissa in the house? I think Arissa's in the house. Arissa did this crazy dragon. Oh my God. Remember the dragon, Arissa? We don't know how she managed to edit it down to a 15, 20 minute video, but uh, her new hubby, I think, helped her. Didn't Mr. Bell, your new husband, help you with that piece? I think we got to see Arissa's husband in that piece, or at least his hands. Yeah, that's a keeper. If he's gonna help you, Paint baby, boys and girls, you got a keeper. If they understand your art, support your art, maybe they don't have to help you paint, but maybe they'll make a shell for, order a secret little present for you because they, okay, I suddenly have a visitor here. I don't know how long he's going to stay. Everybody meet Harley. Hey, Harley. He has decided to be on my arm, but he cannot be anywhere close. So we're about to tell him, no, we're moving. That's not the place where he needs to be. He jumped right up underneath my right elbow and I had to share. Harley was right there. <laughs> That's Jasmine's brother. Can't believe they're from the same litter. The uh, breeder... And by the way, she, her kitties are more for family friendly. She's not like a breeder that sells cats to be bred and sold and shown or anything. But she said, yes, I have a queen that's waddling. And she says, but uh, not sure how many are going to be chosen. And then she mentioned that the solid black or solid gray, gray uh, rag dolls nobody wants. Uh, because they just don't have the markings, right? And I said, well, I guess I have to pray for, and I needed a female to, to balance out the household. I was down to all males, and it gets pretty tricky if it's all guys in the house. So uh, I said I wanted to, e no, she took off, John. She was there as soon as I kicked her brother off. She took off, but the, the breeder goes, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, black ones don't go well, go fast. No one wants to buy a black or gray rag doll. And I said, well, then maybe I need to pray for a black female. And lo and behold, the rent of the litter was Jasmine. And nobody's going to want to buy a black rag doll. But she's turned out to be the funniest little girl. I come back in the house and she's sitting there running all over the house, cooing at me, chatting at me. If I answer the door, they're both sure that there's some kind of door dash order. What does that tell you guys? 
Okay. So <clears throat> now that I've spent all of this time, 40 minutes putting this iridescent down, now how much can you see these colors? If I squint them back, can you see that red on the top? You see the blue kind of in the middle. You see the green, right? We see that violet in there and then the gold on the bottom. Yeah. Well, you know what, Michelle, you're right. And uh, God, I'm loving that gold playing around with that red. That is so pretty. Okay, so now, you see there's some areas here where I miss. See how it's there's no paint right there? That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure we're completely covered. We want no skippage this time. See, there's a little bit of a break there. But the interferences, I don't have to worry even if they cross over and get on each other because uh, they're going to be beautiful if they run into one another anyway. All right, so we have three colors here. This violet's a little bit strange. So what am I going to put that robin's egg over? Now this is the part where I can't have the mix-ups. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of the robin's egg down here. Because remember, we're swiping this direction. Now the robin's egg looks like it went on top of the turquoise, I mean the violet. I'll put some robin's egg here on top of the blue. This is interference blue this is going on. Yeah, I. this is a test board, and if this works, I would love to do a clock like this and, and resin it, and I think it would be so subtle to have in the house. I got more of this stuff, so I guess I'm gonna put another line down here. I know I don't have to use it all, but. I'm really liking what this uh, robin's egg is looking like here. It's a real pretty, pretty color. Yeah, I've had people try to do nothing, but uh, I think they first started swipes with, it was blooms with these and with all the white paint and they were blowing with the dragonfly wings, there wasn't that much color coming up. But imagine here you're trying to blow it into white paint. Of course, it's going to act a, a little bit strange, right? Okay, so this is that goldish red on top. I'm going to flip these around because I can. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Christine, is that your name, honey? Thank you for saying that. Okay, so here is that opal violet, and I'm just going to vein a little bit here. I don't know if there's enough to do three. I'll vein a little bit here. I'd rather have a good amount of color in two places than not enough color in all three. Yeah. This is not a bad big background, even for the string pull people. I mean, I've seen people try to do spring pulls, string pulls after they have a, a nice base of color down. And uh, I don't know. Personally, again, I think it looks really elegant and subtle. Sorry, I'm dripping my, putting my spoons in um, the water here. Spread out this violet just a little bit. Just so it's smoothed out a little bit. Okay. And then we got the firefly. Which is kind of that strange peachy, not peachy, it's more of a goldy color with some red in it.
I must admit, you guys are pretty good for hanging on for 45 minutes watching me mix and play with this. Thank you very much for hanging with me. Yeah, on that color page set now, I'm going to probably do just the colors in the sets, but eventually we we're talking about a way to put some kind of package deal up there for the interferences and uh, something that would get our color play live people a way to get started with all the interferences. Even if it's the same price, but maybe we take the interference colors and we make the set 60 mil jars instead of 30 mil jars, and we give you double the interference. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, Michelle, how we could do that. Michelle DePorto, if that's the Michelle I'm talking to, she, it was her idea, it's all her fault, for coming up with some way that we could do this. Okay, I'm inclined to stop here and now do my swipe, which is the part that makes me really nervous. <laughs> I got my handy tandy pancake turner thing. I find if I go this way, I press too hard, pressing down this way. So I try to flop it over and just tilt up the handle and let gravity do it. But last time, I still screwed it up. I pushed down a little bit too hard, so <clears throat> nothing's perfect. I'm gonna put, uh, you'll see me put the cell activator over here, right on my uh, swipey dipey tool. Instead of just putting it on the tip, I'm gonna make sure it's evenly spread so we don't run out. I hope there's not too much. Anything extra, I'm kind of tapping off. I don't want it sloppy. See how the excess is tapping off in the cup? But I want it wet. Okay, kids. <clears throat> Let's do this. So I'm going to make a contact. Let's get up as close as we can so you can see. As long as it's not in my lap. We're gonna make contact here. We gotta make contact. So this wet paint. Well, that's not too bad, actually. I thought there'd be a lot more pulled off. And I think the way I tilted it, I went a little overboard on the white. Let's move up. We are getting some cellage action there. See what's happening there with that opal blue, opal violet. Maybe I don't need as much paint as I thought because it's not making contact with anything further up than right here. I may be forced to do it the other way in the future, I don't know. I don't want too much paint. Okay, second section down, I'm laying it down. I'm simply taking the handle and letting gravity drag this thing. Yes. Oh, I'm happy. Other than I just knocked over my bottle of cell activator, my bottle, my cup. Nice. Anything can happen in a live, kids. I'm not kidding. See that puddle over there? <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's okay. I'll, sw I'll wipe it up. I'll use it. We'll just swipe it up and put it up on this little thing, right? That's all right. Swipes are meant to be a little bit messy. So I'm putting some of that color here that knocked, got knocked off. Get that cup out of the way so we don't knock it over. Oops. Sorry, knock it over again. Yeah, I want this out of the way so I don't knock it over. All right, so we're down to here. Again, I'm making contact. But I don't want any more than just skim right across the paint 
as low as I can go. There we go. A little bit of paint came off on that one. I have a piece that I started collecting all the old, what type of equipment are you using to film? Uh, nothing yet, I'm just using my phone. I think I'm gonna ruin that. That's got way too much white on it. I've got some place. Here, I'm not real thrilled with how this turned out. Let's see what happens here if any paint swipes off on this. I'm not much for wasting anything, and if there's any interference in here that's gonna create an interesting effect, that's great. I am, what am I use? Well, OBS is what I'm gonna eventually have to use. I've tested it. It worked just before, uh, just before Christmas. And but that same day is when Google had kicked me out of YouTube and I couldn't start my live. And I admit, I am a little bit uh, scared to get everything set up, come on live, give you guys a room to meet me, and then I can't even be in that room. That's a little bit disheartening. Nice. Okay, we got one last section here. See what we got going on here. I'm making the contact. And let's get this swipe done. Oh, that's a lot of paint that came off on that one. Well, oh, there's some definitely some dragonfly wings in this mess. We'll see what this does. This is just a leftover paint because I don't want to waste it. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how this sucker dries, to be honest. Uh, right now, it's looking really subtle. Let me do a little clean up here. I know it'll be gorgeous with resin on top. It just will. It's going to be stunning. But... Of course, we're gonna have to let this dry. I'm gonna tilt it back. There's a lot of white cell of it activator on this end. I'm just getting my tool wiped off first. Yeah, it really, <laughs> doing a live, it's a risk. Harley, get off. Harley's decided that he wants to be part of whatever we're doing today. Not exactly sure why. He's been a curious boy all morning and uh, won't leave me alone. He keeps following me from room to room, so that's okay. He's, I guess he's worried about his mama. He's a mama's boy. All right, I'm cleaning up while I'm talking. I really want to get my gloves wiped off so I don't keep transferring paint. They may look stained, but at least they'll be dry. Let's put the sample over here. All right, my instinct is to do this and tilt it. Tilt it down just a little bit. So if any of the swipe is going to run to the bottom, it can. And get off any of that. How your coaster was, oh, I put that up there, honey, already. It, it was just a test. I, had, I should have ironed the uh, paper flat. It didn't lay down flat that well. Let's fold this over so we're not putting it right on top of wet white paint. So we can see what this is looking like here. I'm loving what that opaly violet did. I'm really loving the robin's egg. And that firefly is really interesting but we need to let this develop, okay? And sadly, this is the one thing, the swipe is a lot of mixing, all this hoopla, and then we gotta wait for it to develop. Now, I see one section here that bothers me. Oh, I see it didn't swipe there, but there's still some iridescent green. Where are you going, honey? You're waiting for the doctor for what? Yeah, this is really pretty. Now, if I had a big piece on my wall like this, I would enjoy it just as is. It doesn't have to be 
super bright as long as it's got all that shimmer and that beautiful sutter, sutter, subtle color. I am loving these veins in here and you guys can't really see them, but I can't wait to resin this. Okay, so Sonia, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to put this back here. I know we don't have a lot of time. We're already at an hour almost. And I keep calling out Sonia's name. Okay. But I brought over some pouncer brushes. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I got to mop up all this cell activator that dumped. <laughs> I can't keep transferring white paint everywhere. Um, I'm wondering, now, when you're painting on the glass, you're pouring it over as a liquid, right? Probably. Uh, most people I see that are doing it are doing it. But I'm wondering, and this backside's just a test. We know that this has had Vivid enamel put on it, so it's created a tooth. I just dry brushed some primer elements into it so the color would hold. But I'm not afraid doing this live right on camera in front of all y'all. Taking some of the metallics and see what... Oh, well, thank you. This hi, There's a video of me doing this. I just bought this cheap little bottle at um, Hobby Lobby. Sponged enamel over to create some tooth. And then I added a little... It looks like the primary elements were mixed in a little enamel. And they were stippled on with this kind of brush. You can pounce it. Right? And then I did the dot effect. Bye, Simone. Nice to meet you, sweetheart. Then I did the dot effect, right? And obviously the Swartzky in the middle. The back was a test. Of course, the public didn't see the backside. Bye, sweetheart. I just want to see what happens. I'm, I've been looking for my little cups for these, little itty-bitty cups. Uh, the other option is to pour some out in lids. I had little itty bitty lids. Where are they? Where am I? Oh, here they are. I got these little itty bitty lids. And I'm not sure. I know if I wanted to detail paint my piece, by the way, those of you that missed it, this is last Thursday's piece that dried the swipe we did last week. And so my thought was, could I touch these up with a paintbrush and the metallics? Okay. Uh, obviously, we're leaving our swipe alone. But I don't know. I'm trying to shake this up to get that, see how that mica settled to the bottom. This is the Lagoon Blue, the metallic. I just want to see if it's going to adhere to the, it should, it should adhere to this. And I don't know if I can stipple it on. I, this has also got that child safety lock. Penny was asking me about this thing this morning, the child safety lock. You kind of have to turn it at an angle. That's such a pretty color, that metallic turquoise. Now, there's some of it straight. You could use it straight. Right, but to have it go a little bit further, which we all are trying to find a way <clears throat> to make our stuff go, here it is in the thing, a little bit further, because this is a varnish blend, right? I can get away with extending it with a little bit of varnish. Oh my God. Did you see what that just did? Look at the reaction when I put the varnish in there. Holy moly. <laughs> See, I made these things because I thought they were cool, but we have yet to even figure out how they're going to paint. Well, that's real sparkly. So I'm wondering if I did some ornaments that I painted black, then I put a gel medium texture on, 
and then I stippled them with this stuff and then resined on top. It would pick up all, because those are really, that's really super sparkly and metallic, right? And this backside isn't that pretty. Let's all be real, man. It just was a test. That's why I didn't mind doing this today with you guys. I know that's not what you were thinking, Sonia. But the feasibility is feasible to add multiple layers on top of one another. Like one layer and then do a violet on top and then do another color on top. This is going pretty far. I only dipped it in that once. But this is a good way to spread it and not feel like you're wasting it. Of course, this would work on any surface, but the question was glass today, and she wanted to use the metallics on the glass and some vase work that she's doing. I'm laying it flat just for a second so I can get a good stipple on it. Wow. That actually went way further than I had expected it to. There's a lot of more color in there than I thought, but that mica is sure showing up. See, and the thing with having an inconsistent surface that's stippled, see how all the light is picking up because you've got different surface heights there because of the, the stippling that enamel below creating the tooth. It's not exactly flat. Wow. Okay, I got a little bit left. Let's use up what I got left in here. Too bad I didn't tape this thing off. I'm just trying to make sure I got all the, oh, here we go. We got some edges here we could get. So it looks consistent on the back. Okay, so then what happens, because this stuff dries super fast. I mean, really fast. You're right, while it's still going on, you could rub some interference on this. With the metallics, is a varnish? No, you could probably use a little bit of, well, you can put them in resin, but I would, I would probably mix it as, as thin as I did here, like mix just a little bit of resin with it. You could probably get away with the enamel, but don't mix too much in it. Yeah, this is either, uh, this one I did with the enamel, but I could have easily done with this, but look how dry that is already. Okay, so then, of course, if I resined on this, it, the sparkle would come back. Then what? Can I use another color in there, like a dancing fuchsia? <laughs> I suppose you guys might let me. I mean, after all, <laughs> you had that color I can't find. I think it's a black, yeah, there's a color called Black Ruby. It's up on the website. It's in the prison pour color, honey. Yeah, I think I have a different sponge. Let me see. I brought two of those stipple brushes over here because I don't want to use the same one. I don't want it this tainted by that turquoise. So I'm going to put my brush in my well. Yep, I got another one over here. I'm going to do another color. That's a, it's turned, that's really pretty. And it's on glass can only imagine doing that as a base coat for some kind of ornament thing. Imagine if we had more texture on here, because then, as Mandy was saying, you could take the highlight. Let me see if I can find some. I think interference might be too strong, but uh, a sparkle of some kind of color might show up. It's not going to hurt if I do this before the dancing fuchsia to see if it would.
See, the sparkle is not going to give you such a strong shift. This almost looks like this has been paper mache It's hard to believe that that's that enamel that did that, right? Now, the tricky part is knowing when to stop. <laughs> right, Mandy? Do we all know how hard it is to stop? I'm teasing her because she's always telling on herself in the beginning of her videos of how many different colors she wants to use and she has trouble stopping herself. Now nah, you just keep pushing the envelope, sweetheart. You just keep pushing the envelope and at a certain point you feel it's ruined, but you know, the world's not mad at you for seeing you push it a little bit further, right? I'm gonna add a tiny bit of varnish to this. I'm gonna just try to do equal part varnish. Again, just a few drops. That way I'm, I'm spreading it. I'm letting it go further because this is pretty, pretty strong stuff. Now, if I was smart, I'd be using a big sea sponge, which I might have in my box back there because this feels too small, to be honest. I thought I brought a sponge over. You're gonna think I'm nuts. I don't know why I picked up this toothbrush on the way over here. I just don't want it going everywhere. Well, that's not gonna work. If I had a sea sponge, I'd be able to have some kind of random pattern, right? You like Mandy's color choice? Okay, this is gonna be nuts. I'm pouring varnish on the top of that and seeing what happens. Cause I only want the pink to sit on the top. I don't want it to take away from the turquoise below. Okay, I'm missing the fact that I don't have a big sponge that could give me random stippling. <laughs> and now I'm glove painting can exactly call this finger painting. Yeah, I had a big sponge over here and I can't, it's not right at my fingertips. I brought it over just in case I had to sponge it. I'm gonna use my paper towel because I wanna lift off some of the pink and reveal my blue below. Now imagine if we did this on some kind of colored resin, John, like pour out some resin, put that uh, shrink wrap on top, let it create that texture, and then do this in between before it gets resined again. Do some kind of uh, layering in between, between the mica and the metallics. Yeah, it's like in this glass, it's, it's really like in this glass. Be curious to see what a coat of resin on this will do because you know it's gonna bring all that sparkle out like that. You like this? Okay. It's just me trying to get two tones on here and see if we can't get this thing to work. So let me get my tools up. I'll put them away. Well, thank you. This would make a really unusual texture, especially if the whole thing was done like that. It's interesting. I've got these other lifted points where I guess it was lighter colors and it's... <laughs> okay, guys. Well, <sighs> that's Friday. Tomorrow I'll be on at 9 me too. I love what that texture, how that texture formed on the glass. I think it's really interesting. Uh, so Saturdays is at nine. I am changing the schedule to Tuesday, Friday. Next week, you'll see the header that'll say Friday. Uh, I do my banking business with my team on Thursdays and I 
Yesterday when I had to put that uh, video up letting you know I wasn't going to be on, that's too inconsistent for me. So I'm changing the schedule. John, are you listening? Tuesday, Fridays at 11 a.m. He wanted to be sure what my schedule was last time him and I spoke on the phone. And Saturday I'll be at 9. Now, two weekends from now is our uh, educational event. It starts at 11 a.m. on Saturday, the 27th, here on my channel. And it starts <coughs> at 11 a.m. on Sunday, the 28th, on Britt Clayton's channel. Uh, it's possible that I might have a live that launches it off. We're still selling, um, but I'm going to do a long-form video or not. Um, if they're, oh, good. I'm glad Friday's is better for you, John. Uh, if I can get the long form video done, I'm on the fence whether I should still come on at nine o'clock, do my normal live, and then tell all you guys to hang on and see at 11 because I don't want to get off our schedule. I want to stay permanently on the schedule. Uh, the code celebrate 35 is, is not visible on the site, but it is still active like I promised you guys until Monday night uh, because the metallic set is now shipping normal and uh, purely pigments metallic set for those of you not familiar with what I'm talking about and uh, that came with a free $25 gift of some nice bling it to go with it uh, you're very welcome Luna and uh, that will be available to also Monday night. You'll get the free gift. Tuesday morning, you're going to wake up and all of a sudden just see the Purely Pigment set normal. We're not going to give away the free gift because we know they're going to be shipping under normal circumstances. We've got our droppers. Everything's moving normally now. <sighs> Thank goodness the holidays are over. Thank you, John. I really appreciate you coming on. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., Hugs and kisses, play with your color. Don't forget to have a little color play at home, right? I got to come up with my tagline when I say goodbye. Like, subscribe, and share if you've enjoyed the content, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.